How to pick your Monster Hunter weapon. Obviously, you should play whatever weapon you enjoy the most. If you're brand new to Monster Hunter, I recommend trying out each weapon a little bit before settling on one. However, you may not like a weapon at first if you don't know what you're doing, and Monster Hunter traditionally has little to no tutorials. Fortunately, there are plenty of video tutorials online, including one on my channel that'll teach you the basics of each weapon in one minute or less. Also, if you're just starting a new save file, the game has you equip the Baby Starter Longsword first, but you already have the Baby Starter version of every weapon in your box already. No need to buy or forge them first, you can just grab it from your box and go. When it comes to choosing a weapon, some players will almost exclusively play one weapon for their whole life across every Monster Hunter game. Others will have a handful of weapons they like to play that they'll rotate between, and some people like to mix it up and play a little bit of everything. You can kind of think of each weapon as its own playable character. When it comes to which one is the best, tier lists are more about speedrunning. Every weapon is good, and they all have some cool moves you can do with them. If you're completely new to Monster Hunter, two great weapons for beginners to start with are Sword and Shield and Dual Blades. Compared to other action games, Monster Hunter weapons generally move slower since that's how the game is designed. I made a whole video about it. So Sword and Shield and Dual Blades are a great bridge between other games and Monster Hunter. Sword and Shield is a well-rounded weapon that's probably the most beginner friendly. It's right there in the name. You've got a sword to slice monsters, you got a shield to block attacks, but more often bash monsters in the face with it. You've also got some fun combos like a perfect rush and jump and dump. Dual Blades are two short swords that deal fast light hits. You activate demon mode, move faster, and then press buttons. These are great if you like button mashing. If this wasn't a neutral video, this would be the part where I tell you that Dual Blades are the best weapons in the game and everyone who uses them are super cool and ridiculously good looking, but this is a totally unbiased video so you won't hear that from me today. Longsword is also a great starter weapon. It has some big samurai swings that'll let you slash the monster's kneecaps like they cheated on you when you're keying their car. I'm sorry Brent! You use one type of slash to charge up your spirit gauge, then use a different type of slash to make your sword better. It's a very popular weapon with many, many abilities and some flashy maneuvers. The biggest risk of using it is that you may never want to try anything else. With Great Sword, it's all about big, slow swings for the biggest damage in the game. That being said, I don't recommend it for beginners, because success with it depends on standing in place and charging up, meaning you need a lot of Monster Hunter knowledge to predict where the monsters are going to be. That being said, Landing a fully charged true charge slash is extremely satisfying to do. It's great for players who like to place big bets and risk it all at the casino. Hammer is sorta of similar to Greatsword, except you can move around while charging up your big damage swings. Plus your uncharged swings are pretty good too. It doesn't have a lot of reach, but you can bash monsters in the head and knock them over to stun them. It's a fun weapon to play and great for players who like golf. Hunting Horn is great, especially if you like playing support alongside your offense. Each attack you do has notes appear in the staff, and when the right notes are there, your songs automatically activate and buffs up both you and your teammates, be it your fellow hunters, your cats, and your dogs. Each horn has different songs available. It's great for players who like to play Bard in D&D. Lance is a pretty straightforward weapon, hence the look of it. You poke, 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 you have the strongest shield in the game, and you can do counterattacks. It's a very sturdy weapon that's especially fun if you like playing a tank role in MOBAs and MMOs. That being said, you don't have to be completely stationary with it. You also have a dash move that's a lot of fun too. Gun Lance is kind of similar to Lance, except it also explodes. You can also unlock a move that blasts you off through the air like Team Rocket. It's a very technical weapon, so there's a bit of a learning curve, but take the time to learn it, and you can be quite explosive on the battlefield. Wait, no, no, don't leave! Switch Axe is two weapons in one. An axe mode for big slow chops, and a sword mode for more precision chops. Personally, it's one of my favorite weapons. It's got a lot of fun and flashy moves. You can mount the monster, then discharge an explode your sword while inside the monster, great for players who don't like to pull out. Charge Blade is sort of like a combo between Sword and Shield and Switch Axe, but in reverse. You charge up energy in Sword Mode, and then unleash your stored energy in Axe Mode for big damage. It's also a pretty technical weapon, but it's really satisfying to land the big damage Axe Mode elemental discharges, assuming you're not me and you don't miss. It's great for players who like to set up elaborate combos in Yu-Gi-Oh. With the Insect Glaive, you have a Bug Buddy that you can launch into certain parts of the monster to bug 
buff up your hunter, and you have a pole that lets you vault and helicopter your way through the air. You can chain the aerial combos together and you'll almost never touch the ground. It's great for players if your favorite sleepover game is Floor is Lava. There are three ranged weapons, and this might be a slightly controversial opinion, but I don't recommend starting the game with one of these. They all need ammo, and while you have unlimited pee pee poo poo ammo, at the start of the game you won't be able to multiply items or craft good ammo as easily, and you probably don't want to spend all your quest reward money on buying ammo after every quest. Plus, each gun and bow are only compatible with certain types of ammo or coatings, and have all sorts of different properties, so that's another thing to learn and plan for before you can play. Instead, I recommend starting with one of the previous melee weapons, then later switching to one of the ranged weapons if you're still interested. They're especially good against flying monsters that don't like to land too often. While playing one of these, you're a safe distance away from the monster, especially in multiplayer. Great weapons to play if you're a little bit- Light bow gun is fast and turns the game into a modern third person shooter. You can also lay mines on the ground that'll explode when the monster's standing over them. Or if you're really good, you can place the mines on the monster themselves for extra damage. They're great for players if their favorite games are Gears of War and Mass Effect, I don't know. Heavy bow gun is slower and sturdier, and you can choose to attach a shield to the front of it. Both guns have different ammo that have different properties or inflict different status effects like poison or paralysis. Use heavy bow gun if your favorite movie is Scarface because you can have the monster Achoo! Uh, say little to your friend, hello. Nailed it. Bow and arrow is a bow and arrow. You can charge up the arrow, then fire it, then fire again, then fire again, then fire again. Different bows have different shot types depending on the charge level. Similar to ammo types, you can apply different coatings to your arrows for different effects depending on the bow. Use bow and arrow if you like bow and arrows. I don't know, it's pretty fun. To test out a weapon, you can go through the buddy plaza, don't flirt with the rondine this time, and instead take the boat to get to the training area. You can pick a weapon from your box near the entrance, then take the ones you're interested in for a test drive. Regardless of what weapon you select, I recommend starting with one you enjoy, and stick with that one weapon until you feel like you have a basic foundation of all the mechanics and controls of Monster Hunter. Then if you like, you can start learning other weapons. But most importantly, remember to have fun. Thanks for watching and don't forget to vault with your insect glaive and glide into that subscribe button. Comment below with what your favorite weapon is and why it's dual blades. And as I mentioned before, I have a video that explains the controls of every weapon in one minute or less, but it really is just the basics and you'll learn the rest as you're playing. And uh, that's it, video's over.